I'm Malcolm Housley. And I'm Janice Baker. Are you worried about how the government could interfere with your super? And we will rock you next on, on our time. time. We Welcome. will rock you. We will rock you. Will we? We will. Is this Queen music we're talking about? No. Don't know. Shall we ask? We will. <laughs> Our very special guest, Matthew Byrne. Matthew, welcome once again to our time. Hi, guys. How Third are you? time in eight years. Yes, I know. You're practically overexposing me. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> nice not. to see you've almost got red hair again, Matthew. Yes, yes. Well, it was for... I don't know about people who dye their hair. How could we? Oh, yeah, how could I know, you? I know. Well, this is I my mean, original colour. I see? know that. I know. That's what I mean. Truthfully, it is. Because my name used to be Auburn. Now it's Matt Byrne. <laughs> 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 Matthew, you, you are without a doubt an extraordinary soul when it comes to theatrical stuff. You know, we all toddle along to see shows in the theatre. Yeah. Um, we're lucky because we've been in lots of different stuff over the years, but mm. I guess most people have no understanding of who makes a show happen and how they make it happen. And what's involved, yes. And how much is involved and, much and is the involved. time involved. But can I take you back to a few months ago when ev you were you were Matthew everywhere because you were writing reviews for the Adelaide Fringe. Yeah, and the festival. Uh, yeah, and the festival, yes. Mm. Uh, did you do any WOMAD ones? And did you well, write not for the really. car I race mi as well? I missed out on all the chicken feathers. <laughs> <laughs> I flew the coop. But Matthew, for you as a producer, looking at all of this other work, is it difficult to be, is it difficult to look at it and comment on it? Uh, not really. I think it's a privilege to get a chance to go and see shows. What I think has been lost from the fringe is it used to be the affordable festival. Ten dollar shows, see as many shows as you could for a hundred bucks. Now the shows could cost you fifty bucks and you'll only see two. Yeah. Uh, and you've got to take a real chance. But, you know, we are so, I just said to everybody, we're so lucky, you know, um, to have fabulous February and Mad March, and then Adelaide goes back to sleep. It's wonderful. Well, it is a concern. <laughs> and, and as you know, me running a theatre and mm. you doing shows, uh, producing shows, we're all concerned about what happens for the rest of the year. But this is also common to Melbourne and to yep. any of the capital mm. cities that have festivals because it's true that the town tends to go back to sleep. So both you and I are doing things about it. And one of the things that you're now got about to start soon is the show We Will Rock You. Tell us about the show. Okay, so We Will Rock You, uh, written by the, using the music of Queen, and the Queen were very heavily involved with it. No Freddie, sadly, um, but also the script of Ben Elton. Now, everybody knows Ben, and how funny he is. He wrote Blackadder, The Young Ones, etc. So he has a and very... The Shakespeare show that's on at the moment. Yes, yes, yes. So his name escapes me. Yeah, me too, too. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that funny Anybody Shakespeare show, that? <laughs> The Crow. I think it's called The Crow. The Crow, it is. Yes, You're right. That's right. So, of course. Um, he's basically taken all the. Um, it, the show is set in the year 2300 on I Planet, where Killer Queen rules the whole planet, and all the Gaga, all the Gaga kids just sing the same songs over and over. Rock and roll is dead. You know um, what's going to happen? And then the young man called Galileo suddenly realizes he wants. Galileo. To, he wants to break free, literally, and the Queen songs start. And then there's this girl, this goth girl that they're worried about too, and her name is Scaramouche. And the question is, will they do the Fandango? Oh. So, um, but they, they're we, clever. Yeah, well, we follow, we follow what happens when he just suddenly starts spouting all these names that he doesn't understand, names of bands and artists that he's never really heard of, but somehow it's locked away in his brain and it's appearing. So what happens is he goes on this journey meeting people like Buddy, full name Buddy Holly and the Crickets, played by myself, who's an old rock historian who works for Global Soft. He was their sort of historian, but he's a real old rocker from an old age. And they end up at... And you are. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Nothing's changed. It's a rock and roll year, <laughs> Malcolm, exactly in 1988, right. with Billy Ballroom and the Beat Roots. Need I bring off. those names I do need again. to explain. <laughs> Matthew and I wrote this show for a theatre restaurant. We closed the theatre restaurant. Yes, that's right. I've closed However, theatre restaurants But yes, everywhere. he played all these nerdy characters, <laughs> and I got to... Jump about as Billy Ballroom yes, and several right. other people. What a great name! And no I love Mercy that. Percy from No Mercy Percy. No Mercy Percy. Yeah. <laughs> character I'm about to regurgitate uh, yes. for a show about myself. Oh, well, that's but he good. starts the show off telling how terrible my old headmaster at school. Yes. Oh, telling whose terrible. name was Mr. Scriven. I actually remember. <laughs> But this <laughs> fictitious one is sending me up. Uh -huh. So, so if you up. love Queen music, 
just about every song you love is going to be in the show. Yes, I've seen From the show in Under London. Pressure. It is. I mean, look, the critics panned the show because they didn't think it was a great musical, but they didn't realise Queen fans just wanted to hear the music. Yes. Yeah. And they wanted some fun. And they wanted Ben Elton's funny script yeah, and his but great Matthew, characters. The, the music is definitely there and it's mm. a loud show. Yeah, oh yeah. It's a loud Think show. Think stadium. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. a big show. It yeah. is a big show. Okay. Yeah. Um, but you're right. Um, Inside of all of us, there's all of these songs we either grew up with or we've heard subtly so in the background times. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And suddenly you see these things on stage and you go, bang, I'm instantly connected. Mm. Now, this is, uh, this is um, being produced by your company, Matt, yeah, B Matt Burn Media. Media. We were very fortunate to get the rights, believe me, because it nearly came to Adelaide two years ago, we were OQ. And then it didn't. Right, and that was my next question. That is the first time it's played in yes, this state, isn't first it? First time it's But it has played, played in uh, It's played all around states, the country. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And our great here. mutual friend, Andrew Pohl, yes. was the resident director of We Will Rock Here. Right. Oh, and people like Bobby it. Fox, who went on to play Frankie Valley for nearly five years, he started in We Will Rock You oh, in Australia. Right. Right. So it's done a lot of good work. Just happened to have a poster. Oh, it just happened to have a poster. <laughs> just happened to have, uh, a have a poster. So, um, you know... Where's the venue? What? Uh, the venue is the Arts Theatre from the July 5th to 14th and Elizabeth Shedley Theatre, home oh. of Jimmy Barnes, Swanee, yep. from July 19th to 28th. And uh, so we do a four-week season, which is pretty amazing. Um, and we've already, you know, we've already got an incredible response to tickets. And, wow. and, you know, now that we're in June, we're like a month away and it is so exciting. Wow. I mean, the rehearsals have been going fantastic and everybody wants, wants to be part of this show. Um, we've got a wonderful All Adelaide cast, Danielle Greaves and Iman Saleh are playing the two leads. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of fun names in it. Um, Catherine Driver and Anthony Butler play... One plays Brit, which is short for Britney Spears, but it's played by a man. And okay. the other one is Oz, short for Ozzy Osbourne, played by a woman. Because they've just looked up in the Hard Rock Cafe and seen these names. <laughs> and just a bit like that scene in, in The Usual Suspects, where Kevin Spacey, when we could mention his name, was, you know, just picking all these names <laughs> off the wall, you know, and, yeah. and, and creating a story around them. Well, they've all named themselves. So we've got Aretha Franklin and all these, of course, they look nothing like, like Aretha them. Franklin. <laughs> but uh, Killer Queen and our horrible super yuppies uh, trying to stamp out uh, any individualism. Rock and roll is dead, but somehow they hear about a guy called Pelvis who had this amazing place down in Graceland, <laughs> and they end up heading across America after they have their brains nearly fried by Killer Queen and her cohorts to try and discover what lies, the hidden acts lying in the lands of Graceland. It's very Ben Elton, isn't <laughs> it? it? Is. If you're a Ben Elton fan, you're gonna with it. his lunacy, you'll, yeah. get, you'll yeah. absolutely get onto yeah. this. Matthew, um, the, the role of theatre like you're creating, um, community-based theatre, as you've said on the program before, what's good about it, it gives local performers a chance to be in the shows. Mm. But the other thing is it also reduces the price because these days you're paying 100 plus to well, see a if we were rock you had come here, you wouldn't yeah. have had much change out of over $100 for tickets. Yeah. As a 45, you know, and yep. 38. So I think that's pretty nice that people can Well, it's also it. understanding how mm. much it actually costs to put these things oh. together. Because yeah. your cost structure is made up, you've got to pay the originators of the piece, yep. obviously. So you pay royalties. The royalties, um, You've yep. got to pay the band and you've got to pay the theatre and you've yep. got to pay for all the advertising. The advertising is really half your budget, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, it has to be because as what's the point? Coca-Cola... They know something about it. Ten percent of their annual budget goes into advertising. Mm. If you know how much money Coca Cola make, mm. you understand how important it is to promote. Well, otherwise people don't know it's on, of course. Well, they always cut promotion first and publicity whenever you know money is short, mm. and they don't realise if people, you know, people are saying, "I didn't know the show was on." I said, mm. "Well, I'm doing my best." Yeah, you exactly. Know, I'm going that Malcolm and Janice. I mean, it's mm. time. That's a top rater in Adelaide. If if they don't come and see it after seeing that, when are they going to come? <laughs> well done. Well, quite Thank right, Matthew. Exactly. Quite <laughs> right. That's what we thought. But that's an other interesting point because if you're doing something like you're doing, there aren't that many avenues left in public They're media nearly all gone. that you can talk about these sorts of things. Whereas back in the days where TV was created in each city, mm. you had the opportunity to go to at least four stations yep. to talk about something. And radio. But it, we've still got the radio, yeah. but still not so But even there, either, that's limited because so much of it's coming And so nationally. I do publicity, and I often do publicity for show, other shows in Fringe and whatever, but you now it's got to the point where I've just, I just do my own because... You know, the only oxygen I get might be for one show. Well, you know, I, 
I'd rather promote, promote your own. Well, of course speaking you of, that's not being cruel, but no, I no, 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 that's true. But speaking of doing one show, that's not enough for you, obviously. No, 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 no. no because we, you, one after this. Well, it's here's to you, Mrs. Robinson. We're doing the South Australian premiere of The Graduate, um, all about Benjamin Braddock, the disillusioned young man who's just come out of university in California. He comes home to think, what am I going to do? Well, I did a Bachelor of Arts and I felt exactly the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and of course it made Dustin Hoffman a star yep. and, and, Bancroft and Bancroft was amazing. So um, watch out for The Graduate in October at Holden Street. Um, book if you want to come and see it. But for now, it's We Will Rock You. Two weeks uh, at the Arts, two weeks at the Shedley. Book at Ticketech or mattburnmedia.com.au. We'd love to see you. We're going to rock this town. Stadium rock. And you will. Sounds you wonderful. absolutely will because yeah. it is exactly that. It's a good rock and roll piece. Of it sounds amazing. Just sit back and let the music flow when over. I saw, the last time I saw Queen before they just came here recently was in 1976, Apollo Stadium. The show finished with Freddie Mercury in a white kimono singing Hound Dog. Of course. <laughs> As you keep, do. keep that image in your head. And <laughs> yeah. We're going, to, we're going to be back in a minute just to find out, is the tax, is the tax, is the government going to fiddle with is your super? super? Welcome back. Janice, yes. do you have super? Yes. I don't. No, we've had this conversation we have. before, which is a worry. Well, oh. I think there are different ways of, of, and that's one of the things that I will be asking our next guest. John, it's lovely to have you here once again. John, great. Thank you to both of you. Yes, welcome back. Thank John, you. Um, and you come from a company that advises people, don't you? We do, we do, and have been doing for a long time. And what makes you an expert in this field, John? <laughs> <laughs> I think expert's a bit of an overstatement. However, I've been working in the superannuation industry for a long time. I also happen to be a trustee for a national superannuation scheme, so I get a big picture view of it and I provide advice to people at an individual level. And that's what I wanted you to say, so people knew we were getting it from... The horse's mouth. Not Thank that you. we're calling you a horse. <laughs> okay. I'd just like John. to ask, uh, sorry, um, what age group do you find are coming to you for advice? Is it more uh, over 50s or are there younger people coming wanting to know, you know, whatever they need to know about their super? Janice, a good question. There are certainly people who are concerned as they get closer to that pointy end of their working life and want to know that they've got resources which are sufficient to cover what they want to do. Yeah. But I reckon there are more younger people actually taking an active interest in superannuation now because they understand there are different ways that they can look at it. Um, they're engaging more on it. Are they? I just wonder, because we do have a business, uh, my husband and I, and I would just think that the staff expect their super to come out of their wage or uh, however they, they'll deal with it. But uh, So I'm just wondering if... They actually but they don't do follow need, it through. No, but do they actually need to look into it more? It's interesting because historically there's been a, a lack of engagement mm. um, because people see it as a bit of a grudge um, like amount being set aside. Yes. Effectively, yeah. they don't yeah. see it. No. Um, they probably would prefer to have it in their pocket. Sure. In the longer term, it's probably good that it's being set aside, but they don't necessarily part with it easily in the first instance. Well, they don't always realise it's part of their wage uh, package, if you like, either. Mm. It was originally negotiated that way. Rather than a, a wage increase, um, there were some increments that went into superannuation. And the philosophy behind it was probably really good because Australia is now seen as one of the better models for superannuation globally because we have this pot of money which indirectly we could call a sovereign wealth fund. So we're actually a country that's more self-sufficient because we've got this pool of money. The word, okay. You did use the word probably, though, there, John. Um, it's, it's not truly a sovereign wealth fund because a sovereign wealth fund is a fund that the government's sure, got control no, over. Probably but... a good idea, you said. Probably a good idea. I, I challenge that because of the conversation that's been going on lately in government. And for some time, um, I guess people are sort of a bit suspicious are the government going to try and get their hands on some way of taxing my super? The bigger the pot, the more enticement there is for fingers to uh, 
work on how they can take a piece of it. And I think you're quite right. I think super now is over two trillion. It's a big number, pretty hard to get your head around, but it's a very significant number. Mm. And a small part of that is very attractive for government to put aside and fund other priorities. And we've seen the opposition come out and talk about um, dividends and the fact that credits for tax that's been paid may not be as generous as they have been historically. And the unexpected consequences of a significant change like that are material because there'll be a lot more people affected than mums and dads who own oh. a few Telstra shares or mums and dad who own just a few bank shares. Um, mm. Everybody will be impacted. So meddling. And the last thing I'll just say as a historical point, for 35 years, the government have made a change every year in super. Every year? So, so it's, years. it's supposed to be one of these consolidated vehicles which is safe, secure yeah, that we can and rely there for on. a dedicated purpose and they're meddling. And mm. a bad thing, you think, or a good thing, John? I think, I think by and large, they're meddling too much. People want certainty and they, and they want to understand in a simple more. way yeah. that the outcomes are known and certain. Well, let's get back to the basic reason it's there. The basic reason it's there is to take the pressure off people getting a pension when they retire, if retire yes. is the word. Yes. And the other meddling that's occurring is the suggestion that a retirement age is going to go past the point of 63 and 65. Is that correct? The age pension has often been used as the notional retirement age. Historically, it was 65 for males and oh. 60 for women. Oh, that's, that, that's now graduating to 67. Um, but, the, but retirement is really more about the individual choosing when to retire. Yes. Because... Well, Janice, she should have some time ago, but, you know, can't get rid of her. <laughs> um, because it, it's about how much money people need to feel self-sufficient and safe. Mm. Um, the concept was this will replace the government's liability for age pension because there are more of us moving into this age group that are going to finish or wind down in work. Mm. Or more particularly, need assistance to keep living longer. Exactly. Mm. In fact, um, very important point, because we actually are living, living longer. longer. Mm. And, not, and we're not necessarily all that healthy as we age into our 90s or whatever, and we do need real nursing care. Yes. And it doesn't mean that we don't stop thinking, but it just means that we physically can't do a lot of things we did when we were younger, like walk. And one of, one of the things that people, I think, are fearful of is outliving their capital. Oh. Um, in other words, just not knowing there's enough there to sustain them for their the rest of their retirement life. Yeah, so well, do they go and have the medical or do they just like... Fate take its course because they don't have enough money to look after themselves. Gee, that's a thought I haven't it. honestly no. thought that. That's a reality, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I guess I was in a position a long time ago, I thought, well, I need to look after myself myself. This is before super became reality. Because uh, having worked in show business all my life, one of the difficult things with show business is back when there was no such thing as super being paid by employers. Mm -hmm. And in a way, you were self-funded anyway, um, that you didn't work for somebody, you really worked for yourself and rented out yourself to a show or a TV thing or whatever. Yeah. And so <clears throat> I bought real estate, and I guess you did too. Yeah. And we sort of thought, well, that'll be good. It's amazing the number of people that say to me, why don't you start selling that, retire, and just live off the pension? But I don't feel the pension is... I mean, you can live sustainably, mm. but as the point you just made before, we're living longer and we're capable of doing more things longer. So if you want to take the cruise or if you want to discover the world, if you want to take up macrame or some other thing, everything costs money and maybe the pension is not going to pay for that. I, I would agree. I think the pension is really uh, there to sustain basic need. Oh, um, pay the it, rent, it, it's, it's very important to recognise as well, mm. if a couple are living in a home and then suddenly there's a sole survivor, the pension for the single pensioner is 
well below what's required to sustain because overheads and costs are mm. very similar, mm. Mm. whether they're one or two. One or two people, and exactly. the maintenance of the assets is similar. So Well, that's true. And that's the maintenance of assets, including your home, of course, um, can be more than you can afford. Mm. Things like painting, your guttering rotting, exactly. simple things, mm. trees growing up that you can no longer prune down and all of those sorts of things. Yeah. So, John... Is there a blanket advice that we can look at as um, uh, as people who are going to age in the future to stop the government dabbling? I think it's a, I think it's a significant challenge. Um, I really do believe that governments will do whatever they need to do at the time, and so often their vision is short term because yes, they're they're considering the budget today. And they're only they're going to be in power for a short time as history is starting to show. That's right. A bipartisan, a stronger bipartisan um, view is needed to extend past just the current political party. And oh. we're very fortunate, I think I should still say, we are extremely fortunate in Australia to have such a significant retirement pool of wealth. It's a very important part economically with the fabric in our economy, and um, we are considered to be at the forefront by many countries. Yes. So we and, need to look and, after it. And all that's all mm. that's fine, but at the same time, it is your money, and it is your money that's been, in a way, you've earned that money. And yes, you haven't paid tax on that money initially, have you? You you will have paid tax if their employer contributions, the fund will have paid the tax. The fund will have paid the tax. 15%. Right. But 15% is, in, in, uh, for a lot of people, a lot less than they would pay it as a marginal tax rate. Sure. But, so, at, the, but at the same time, you have paid your tax on that money. And the fact that that could change in the future is of concern. So in a way, really, the only option we've got is to really start talking to the members who are in, in government in state and federal politics to say... We're leave not our money alone. I agree. Just leave and it, and it, it is about lobbying. It's about mm. people actually stating We need to be more proactive case. for our own benefit. I agree. Mm. Well. Mm. Stay with us. Yes, Don't go away. There's more questions. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment and hopefully John can answer them. Our guests on this episode have been Matthew Byrne and John, uh, John Grokey. John, um, some quick advice. Super isn't the only answer, is it? No, I'd life? agree. Many people have a diverse interest in financial assets. It's about having sufficient to generate enough income to have a choice to do what you want to do. So any time in life we should really look at what we will be doing in the future, proposing that we will live to 95. Something like that. Something like that. <laughs> That's right. Matthew, um, as a show producer, what advice would you give people? Well, my dad, he's lived to 98. Has he really? And he's going very well. Well, I hope you're looking after him. And uh, <laughs> he, he, uh, he loved music and he would peer out of nowhere with a guitar and just start singing. <laughs> and that's where I kind of got it from. Yeah. Right. But um, seeing a live show is, is something that's shared. It's something that's wonderful. It's not a movie. It's not TV. It's, there's Christopher Walken summed it up. He said, I realise there should be another character in the program and it should be the audience because I used to use the audience. Yeah. You know? true. And so that interaction with the crowd is just so important. It's true. Without and that applause or that laughter or that, yeah. that thing that an audience gives you as a yeah. performer, yeah. it's not the same. We all work together for common goal. Well, good theatre is good for the soul. And as the song says, the butcher, the, bro you know, the grocer, the baker, the clerk get paid for what they do but no applause. No. And because, you know, there's no business like show business. It's true. And when, you know, everything's gone and everything's gone to hell in a handcart, you can still walk out on that stage and knock them dead. And here's Janice to sing. There's no business <laughs> like show <laughs> business. <laughs> <laughs> gonna... I could do because yeah, I haven't I done that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and there's no business like financial business no, either, isn't there, John? There isn't. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been yeah. great to talk yeah. to you both. No, thanks yeah. for And we'll be back next time with our time. Yes, we we will. We, uh, we just remind you, you can find us on Facebook, you'll find out who's on the show and you can watch past episodes. So till next time, keep yourself nice to Yeah, take care.